Okay, so we're back with the Wiimote and the Nunchuck. One thing you want to be aware of that it must... It, the Wiimote must be Wii Motion Plus for some of these games to work. So we'll play the same mission again, but we'll play it from the point... ...a view of... Oh gosh, the... One thing I found on the current setup while I'm at home is that my bloody sensor bar keeps just falling off my TV. And that is, without a doubt, one of the most annoying things about the about the uh, Wii U, is the sensor bar. You still obviously need a sensor bar. Oh, it's the off button. I didn't realise that when I first saw it. I was like, oh, what's that symbol? Oh, it's the off button. Oh, has the cat had a go at this, this nunchuck? No, it, yeah, it has. I don't want to practice, I'm good. Skip. Cool. I've not actually played um, with this before, so let me... Give me some time. Okay, defeat all the enemies. I love that, I have to say I love that without... Okay, so you hold A to strife, which is quite cool, I like that. Oh, that is... <laughs> the Wiimote makes a noise. I find as ever, though, the Wiimote isn't as sensitive as it could be. Um... There we go, so I can charge shot. Oh, so it's the same thing, but it's more of a time, time button. That's cool. And... down. Uh, it's actually a little harder to get more accurate shots, I think. Final wave, and I know exactly where this wave is. Yeah, there we go, they're all up here. That is annoying, they kind of bounce off. That was lucky for me, and shoot that one. Ah, uh, there's some still up here. There we go, enemies left one. That's what you get. So in a way, it's quicker on foot. Da -da -da. So yeah, that felt good. I like that. Hit ratio was obviously much less, but... So what we'll do now is we'll head back onto the Zelda one, and I'll show you the sword combat with that. The Zelda, that's the only game I think which requires both the use of the nunchuck. Um, although I'm, over, I'm not really sure. Wait, no, no, I'm using the Wiimote now. Oh, you can actually use the Wiimote to move about. Okay, that's good. So in a way, it's still very much like the Wii, um, but with a, with in HD. Which, I'm not gonna lie, is awesome. Nintendo, oh, remove the nunchuck. It doesn't tell you what it is, it's like, do, just do that, just get rid of it, don't bother with it, boy, no, it's, it's bad. Okay, so the idea with this one is pretty much, you've got control over the Wii, over the sword, much like you have in Skyward Sword. You can raise the shield as well. It's... I'm not attaching my Wiimote strap, because I'm not an idiot and I don't have butterfingers, and I'm not thinking it's like a bowling ball, which I will just career off into someone's face. What are the... what are the, um, things in this one? Thousand Rupees, Triforce Retriever, Seasoned Adventure. I guess Triforce Retriever is getting all of the... is completing all of the missions. But I think I'll, I'm, I'm more likely to play it through like this, because I find it more fun. Okay, so there we go. So the idea is we've got slash, 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 you hold it up. And it's not really a Skyward Strike, but it allows you, it's like if you hold it back, you can get the spin up as well. I find myself overusing the spin, because it is quite fun. Especially when you get close to enemies, and boink! All three of them dead. The problem is it does leave you vulnerable, it isn't the, you know, isn't the, or the big awesome move that people think it is. So, slash... It's very good at targeting you on at enemies um, as well. It's 
And the enemies don't always hit you from behind. Like, I've not got to a point in which I felt the game is unfair in the sense of how it work and how it hits. Like, how you... This is actually cute. I love this one, I have to say. Oh, and you can also change target as well. I don't know how he's holding a sword like that, but there you go. It feels like you get more rewards for just get doing like steady strikes and not being an idiot and doing what you did in the old games and just, you know, that. Although that does work as well. But yeah, this one is more, is obviously is easier, it's more fast-paced, because you are in the action all the time. However, the issue with this mode comes very shortly, and I will explain it, what my issue with this game, with this particular game mode is with the, with the sword. There we go. That's what you get for being that guy. Oh, I can put my sword through my shield. That was well done. Okay, so these guys are your arbitrary win motion plus guys. Slash, 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 slash. He's dead. Slash, slash. Oh, no. Now, the problem with them is, which is the problem with most win motion plus games, is when I move my nunchuck, sorry, move my Miro to the left, trying to hit like a, a, sl a, a slash from the left. Moving it from right to left will slash right to left. Set me off guard so I can't slash left to right. It's really infuriating, and it basically moving it one direction counts as a slash, and it's and because of that, you end up hitting the way you don't want to hit it, and that's the main problem with Skyward Sword as a game, which I found is the same problem with this game. Okay, well there we go. So let the final thing we'll do is the mission, and we'll sorry, we'll spend all these coins. Merry Christmas, honor in Scotland. Nice Triforce. They may have molded that one a little bit wrong. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do the final segment of Nintendo Land. This episode's the longest because I think it's pretty. Oh, it's a double coin day on a game I can't play. So yeah, the one thing I should explain about Nintendo Land is you've got is um. Actually, I don't know where my items have gone. Oh no, they're all there. They're just big items, which um. Shit, that's a good point. Where have they all gone? Oh no, they're there. Must have been hiding. Yeah, Master and Morgan, you can shut up. So you go up here, and then you touch the floating monitor, and you get this... So basically the idea is you get prizes. So with these ones, it is basically like a brick break type game. Really? We're going to go through that without... The idea is to go through and get as many of them as possible. That'll get that, and hopefully one of them will... No. One, will you? Oh, yes! And every time you complete them, you get a prize. Usually they take between 10 to 20 coins to do. This one is... Ha! <laughs> that always happens. This one is actually, it looks easy because of the way it is, but it is actually quite hard because of course you've not got a straight, a lot, a lot of them you actually do have a few straight shots, but that one, this one not so much. I love this, I love this one, it just, it feels good, obviously the free prize you get something and you can open it in the overworld. There we go, zero coins, clear. What's the next one I get? That one's really easy anyway. But yeah, there's quite a lot of them, and six prizes. So let's find out what those six prizes are then, shall we? No, I don't want to play more Nintendo Land. Okay, so on the touch screen, on the screen you touch them, and find get the gear crank from Crash Course. This one is a heart. Source of I think I already got that one. Conveys a sense of weight and permanence. Good Nintendo, good. Okay, that's got the doors, already got those. What else have we got? What's this? Oh, these things. And what's this? Give me a second. 
Okay, and we're back. Sorry, just got a call there from my dearest mother. Um, going to town at some point looking for an extra Wii Motion Plus accessory. What is this one? Oh, this one is the Wii Motion Plus help, isn't it? Oh no, this is the effects button, I think. <clears throat> All the different effects. That's quite cool. What's this? This one is the day, night, night time. Which I have to say is a really nice feature. What's this one? Oh, that turns everything to everything from the part from the bo boxes out of the boxes. That's cool. Uh, this is the music. Oh, I got another piece of music. Uh, the floaty one. What else have I got? Um, and the yeah, not the best pieces of music ever, but yeah. So that's basically Nintendo Land. As I said, that's one of the th I I really enjoy the. Why is the Pikmin one got more popular? Oh, that's them. That's with those, not me. Um, yeah, so I really do like Nintendo Land. It's a good example of what the Wii U can do, and it showcases that they're... the weakness for me is still in a lot of the calibration features for the touch for, for the um, the motion on the device. Um, same with the Wii U gamepad, to be honest. Um, they were found found in times when you were using it in. Um, sorry, my my legs are shaking. That's why I, that's why the screen's shaking. Um, for times of like. Yeah, it just the calibration just tended to wear off quite quickly. Maybe that's because of the way I'm using it, but it might not be. Um, but yeah, anyway. And that's going to be this for this episode of... <clears throat> this is going to be a long, long episode. But I just wanted to kind of show you... Oh, this is this. I'm um, just all about Nintendo Land. And to try and help you make up your decision on whether to buy a Wii U. If you want to buy a Wii U, the premium pack, the black kit, does look a lot nicer than the white kit. And I'd suggest the best place I bought mine off Savvy off eBay for £225. Now, for the US folk, it's not. That seems like quite a lot. Um, that's because it is. We get, like, ripped off. Um, however, if you're in the UK, that is quite a good price. It's no longer available, but keep, keep looking out. Um, so, anyway, guys, see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. And I will have a, like, talk about some of the other features on um, the Wii U.